वेलकम टू लोक सत्ता यशस्वी भव हाई स्टूडेंट्स यू मस्ट बी ऑन योर लास्ट फेज ऑफ योर एस एस ईयर ऑलरेडी यू मस्ट है ऑफ स्टैंडर्ड टेंथ आलजब्रा सिलेबस वंस अगेन आई वुड लाइक टू टेल यू दिक्स टॉपिक्स ऑफ योर स्टैंडर्ड टेंथ आलजब्रा सिलेबस विच आर अरेथमेटिक प्रोग्रेशन एंड जोमेट्रिक प्रोग्रेशन कॉर्डेटिक इक्वेशन लीनियर इक्वेशन इन टू वेरिएबल्स probability statistics 1 and statistics 2 as you must have revised the various properties and the formulas regarding to this six topics you must have also revised various sums related with the topics before you go for your final exams in the month of march for your algebra uh, subject kindly i would advise you to practice papers related to the topic so you would be well versed with the time which is required for solving each type of the question children i would once again like to take your attention to the paper pattern of standard 10th algebra syllabus which contains five questions question 1 would contain seven questions out of which you have to solve any six each carrying one mark Question two would contain six questions, out of which you have to solve any five. Each question would contain two marks. Similarly, question three, you have to solve any four out of five, which carries twelve marks. So each question would carry three marks. Question number four, you have to attempt any three questions out of four, which would carry twelve marks. And the last question, you have to solve any four out of five, which would carry twenty marks. Together, your question paper would be of sixty marks. Look at question one, which has seven sums in it, out of which you understand six topics are there. So at least one question of each topic will be given in question one. there are no such sums given in your exercises related to one mark so students kindly understand that mostly all the seven sums or at least three to four sums may be different than the sums which are given in the text so do not worry even if they are hrt sums if you know the proper theories and the proper formulas related to all the topics you will be confident in solving all the seven sums and scoring full 6 marks let us go through all the seven questions here given in paper 1 the first question asks is write the first term in the arithmetic progression 4 3 2 now here the answer would be simply the first term is a that is equal to t1 that is equal to 4 so just writing a is equal to t1 is equal to 4 you are going to get one full mark see the second question find the arithmetic mean between 10 and 12 this question you have to just write the formula of the arithmetic mean which is x plus y upon 2 so your x would be 10 and y would be 12 if you add both and divide it by 2 you are going to get the answer so merely writing the formula and the answer is going to give you one full The third question here is related on chapter three quadratic equation, where you have to write the quadratic equation in the standard form. You should know what is the standard form. Here, fortunately for you, they have given the standard form in the question itself. That is, a x square plus c is equal to zero. So accordingly, you find the term thirteen y, which is written on the right hand side, just come to the left hand side with minus sign, and so your equation would become y square. Minus thirteen y minus nine is equal to zero. Fourth sum. Fourth sum is based on chapter three, where you have to find out only one the value of one variable x when determinant in terms of x is given minus eighteen and d is equal to three. Here again, you have to just write x is equal to dx upon d, which would give you the half mark. And the remaining half mark for writing x is equal to minus six. Question number five. Write the sample space here. You would just say that let S be the sample space and just write a coin is tossed, so the sample space would contain H and T, head and tail. Similarly, question number six and seven are based on statistics. Children, once again revise the topic which is given to you in standard nine syllabus for answering the sums related to question number one. which would contain the sums based on the basics of statistics now let us come to question number 
where you have to attempt five sums out of six. So each question would carry two marks. Now when you attempt five questions, again here the questions will be related to all the topics. So you have to revise all the topics. The second question asked is on chapter number two, that is quadratic equation, where they have given one of the root of the quadratic equation x square minus 11x plus k is equal to 0 is 9. So we have to find the value of k. Now, when the root is given, which means the root satisfies the equation. So it is very simple to calculate the sum. Substitute 9 in place of x in the equation and find the value of k. Sum number 3 find the value of the following determinant. Write down the determinant as it is given in the question paper and remember the formula a into d minus b into c. So you get the value as 5 into 1 minus minus 2 into minus 3. Do not forget the basics of integers and accordingly minus into minus will give you plus 6 and 6 when you subtract it from 5 you get the value of the determinant as minus 1. Sum number 5 is based on probability where you have the formula mean minus mode is equal to 3 into brackets mean minus median which shows the interrelationship between the various forms of central tendency where the value of mean is given and the value of median is given. Substitute the values in the formula and you get the answer of mode as 98. Question number 6 is related to the last topic that is statistics 2 which is based on the pie diagram. Children if you remember as I had told you when I was explaining the statistics lesson on pie diagram there are two types of questions asked. First type of question is based on drawing the pie diagram from the information which is given to you and the second type is based on the pie diagram which is given to you and the questions asked on it. Here is the second type where the pie diagram is given to you and you have to answer the questions accordingly. For this, revise the pie diagram, see the questions whatever they are asked. Here the question is related on the pie diagram which represents expenditure on different items in constructing a building and they have asked you to find out the expenditure on labor and the expenditure on bricks and the total construction cost is given 5,40,000 rupees. Accordingly, you have to convert the degrees into rupees and find out the two answers. Now we come to question number three, which is solving any four out, uh, any four out of five questions, which would carry three marks. Out of which the first sum is based on the formula Tn is equal to A into R raised to N minus one, where A is the first term and R is the common ratio. So this sum is again related on chapter one. Chapter 2, we have the sum where we have to solve the quadratic equation. 3y square minus 14y plus 8 is equal to 0 by factorization method means you have to split the middle term. Here it would be advisable if you show the product of the first term and the last term 3 into 8, 24 and split the two terms to get the middle term. Accordingly, find out the roots of this quadratic equation as your answer. Sum number 3 is uh, based on chapter number 3 which is a little different type so I would like to read the question for you. Without actually solving the simultaneous equations given below decide whether it has a unique solution, no solution or infinitely many solutions. Accordingly two questions would give, be given to you. You have to write these two equations in the form of a1x plus b1y is equal to c1 and a2x plus b2y is equal to c2 and then accordingly find the values of a1, a2, b1, b2, c1, c2 and write them in the ratio form. If you find that a1 upon a2 is equal to b1 upon b2 is equal to c1 upon c2, then we say that the given two simultaneous equations has infinitely many solutions. Come to sum number 4, which is based on chapter 4, that is probability. Here they have asked a question regarding red balls, white balls and green balls. Accordingly, you have to find the sample points, the sample space, the points which are related to events P and Q. So accordingly, you have to start the sum by writing down the sample points in sample space. Accordingly, the number of sample points, the number of sample points in event P and Q accordingly, which would give you simple three marks. 
Now the sum which is related to question number 5 is based on chapter number 5 that is statistics 1. There you have to find out the modal number of trees planted based on which you have to remember the formula mod is equal to L plus Fm minus F1 upon 2 Fm minus F1 minus F2 multiplied by H where L is the lower limit of your modal class, Fm is the frequency of the modal class, F1 is the frequency of the pre-modal class, F2 is the frequency of the post-modal class and H is the width of the class. Accordingly, you find that the maximum frequency is 100 and the corresponding modal class is 20 to 30. If you substitute the values in the formula and do the sum arithmetically, you will get the proper mode and so you would score full three marks accordingly. The remaining two questions, question number four and question number five, we are going to discuss in the next video.